Well, hello and welcome to this week's vlog. Thank you so much for your great response to the vlog last week. I'm really pleased that you enjoyed the answers to the questions that you gave me. I have three more great questions to answer this week. Uh, so I'll get onto those in just a moment. Now, you remember that last week I mentioned I had some exciting news. Uh, I wasn't quite sure when the big announcement was gonna happen. In the event, it happened after I posted the vlog. Um, so I can now tell you that I've signed a new three book deal with Pan Macmillan, which means that I'm moving publishers. Um, now, some of you, if you've looked on my website, you'll see that I posted about it and said a little bit about how it came about. Um, it's very strange to do it this way because both of the, I had two three book deals with Avon um, initially, and both of those I negotiated without an agent. I didn't have an agent when I was discovered on Orthonomy. Um, and for quite a few years I didn't feel that I needed one and then it's kind of, as time went on, I thought, no, actually it's really important to have one. So I've kind of done things the wrong way around if you look at the accepted wisdom, which is that you write a book and then you find an agent and then you find a publisher. Um, but it means that my lovely agent, Hannah Ferguson from the Marsh Agency, was able to do all the negotiations. And this was all happening, which I couldn't tell you at the time, I so wanted to tell you. Uh, it was all happening a week before Flo was born. It was the craziest week of my life, um, but also the most exciting. And in the end, it was kind of, there were several publishers that were interested, which I've never had that happen before. Um, and Hannah kind of dealt with it all. And I kept getting updates, which was very, very strange, very different from the way that my other deals had been sorted out. But I'm really pleased to say that I'm moving to Pam Macmillan. I'm going to be working with the lovely Caroline and her team. And I know Caroline, she, Caroline worked for a time at A. On. so I have actually met her before um, I feel very excited about it I, d I talked to her at length uh, while all the negotiations were going on um, and I love what she's sort of seeing about where my books can be I have lots and lots of ideas um, and I think that it's important for me to kind of just develop my style and move on. I don't ever want anyone to pick up one of my books and go, I've kind of read this before, this is sort of what she's done before. Um, so I'm not necessarily taking my books in a completely different direction, but I just feel like it will be It'll be a step up from what I've done before. Um, first book will be coming out with Pam McMillan uh, at the end of next year. I, don't, I haven't got a date yet, but it'll be around that time. Of course I will be vlogging about it. Of course I will share with you what the story is about. I'll give you more of that as we go along. But this year, we're still looking at I'll Take New York, and Avon are really excited about putting it out there. And I'm really pleased that I'm kind of, my last book for them is, I think, going to be one of my best. Um, I, I feel very, very positive about it. So it's all very exciting. So there we go, there's my big news. Um, and I'm just, I'm sorry that I couldn't tell you beforehand because I was waiting for the big announcement, but it's just so exciting and I'm over the moon about it. So let's get on to your questions. Enough about me. Um, <laughs> first question is from Facebook and it's uh, Bev Chadwick on Facebook. Hi Bev, thank you very much for your question. She said, Do you think writing ebooks is a good idea or to go down the more traditional route? I think it, from what I can work out, you're thinking about starting to write ebooks, maybe self publishing. Um, I don't think there's a problem with self publishing. I, I think that it's really changed in the last few years. I think there's so many great opportunities out there for writers. What I would say is, I wouldn't think too much to begin with about the actual platform for it. I would say the most important thing is to make sure that you have a great book. So the most important consideration for you right now, if you're just starting to write, is to write a great story and work on it and, and look at it like you would do, whether you were working with a traditional publisher or whether you were actually publishing it yourself. Um, so write a first draft, get it all down, get to the end, then go back and edit it. What I would say is if you're going to self-publish, get it looked at by an editor. There's some great freelance editors out there um, who will look over your um, story, will make sure that they'll find things, they will find things, I promise you they will find things that you've missed. Um, I would always say you need to have it looked by an editor, um, especially if you're self-publishing because it's really just, it's down to you when, when it goes out there. And one of the biggest um, bugbears that reviewers seem to have about self-published books is they talk about typos, they talk about factual inaccuracies. You need to have somebody looking over that for you because I can guarantee as a writer you won't see it. 
Um, so that's what I'd say. I'd also say about investing in a really great cover designer if you're going to self-publish. So you need to make sure that people, you know, that your product looks as good or your book looks as good as you know the, the the books that you see in the supermarket that are published by traditional publishers it needs to be really eye-catching and you need to think about it like a business but the first point of call I would say is make sure you have a great book regardless of whether you're going to send it to a publisher whether you're going to publish it yourself so I hope that answers your question uh, next question is from Sarah Wilkinson on Facebook hi Sarah thank you very much for your question Sarah said uh, do I have a plan in mind for my characters or do they lead me in different directions well um, writing a book a year means that I have to be a lot more structured than, than I would naturally want to be. I'd quite like the idea of starting a story and kind of seeing where it goes and in that situation your characters can really surprise you. Um, when, you're doing, when I'm doing a plot uh, and I do a plot line for my books because I have to be a bit more organised I sort of need to know where my, where my characters are going. That said I always leave a little bit of room for my characters to kind of do things that I'm not expecting and it sounds weird to anybody who's not a writer that will sound really weird um, and quite spooky. It's not spooky, it's just being a writer. Um, sometimes when you're writing, it, your original idea of what you want a character to be kind of changes. Um, that's one thing that I say about writing a first draft and then going back and editing it because very often you don't know your characters till you actually get and you write the end. Uh, then you can go back and say, well why would she do that at the beginning because she's a different person at the end of the book. Um, when I was writing Fairy Tale of New York, which was my very first book, um, Ed Steinman, who's one of the main characters, was only ever really meant to be Rosie's comedy sidekick. Um, so it surprised me when I found out that by the end of the first chapter, and I'd written him in, he kind of demanded a more important role, and that shaped the way that the book was written. Bear in mind that when I wrote Fairy Tale of New York, I never expected it to be published, so it was really just writing and seeing where it went. But they do surprise you. There's sometimes that you plan certain events that are going to happen at the end of the book, and they happen in the middle, and that changes the shape of the story. Um, sometimes you just kind of there's a character that you've really worked on and then you find that actually they're not the most important character and you sort of pair them back and bring another character forward so yes I think your characters do surprise you and I quite like leaving room even in a plan I don't plan and plot every single thing that happens I plot the main things that happen and then I leave a little bit of room to see if my characters have their own ideas of what they want to do so I hope that answers your question Last question from lovely Megan in the Sunshine on Twitter. Hi Megan, thank you very much for your question. Thanks for being patient because you asked it a few weeks ago. Then here's the answer. She said, uh, is there a certain location or setting I haven't written about yet, but I'd like to for a future book? Well, those of you who followed my vlog last year will know that I scrapped a, a whole novel that was supposed to be book five. Um, and I then wrote Take a Look at Me Now, which is which became my fifth novel. The original book that I did was set in and around South Devon, um, which is a place that's really, really special to me. I quite like writing about communities by the sea. I think there's something different in the way that people think when they're down there. I think, you know, when you've got a beach at the end of your road, you're not so worried about stuff. Um, and then also there's that kind of isolation. So you can kind of have the two sides of it. Um, I would really like to write about the, the, about an, an area by the sea, particularly Devon, because it's it's an area that I love very, very much. Um, whether I do anything with the, the, the original book um, is still there, and it's still there I can do something with. It's, it's it was a completely different story to take a look at me now. So it's kind of there, and I'm thinking about it, or maybe that a future book is set by the sea. Um, but that's something that I'd quite like to write about, just because I think... It's just, yeah, I'd quite like to just see what happens when you put characters in that setting. So I hope that answers your questions. So there we go. There, that's the vlog for this week. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got a question, like I said, pop a, quest pop a question in the comment box underneath this vlog. Or you can email me, mirandawordy at gmail.com. Or you can tweet me at wordsmith on Twitter. So there we go. Take care. Have a great week. And I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.